Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you and welcome to Baidu's exam prep, the most comprehensive preparation app for all exams. So as you can see, uh, today is uh, 16th August and we are here with uh, the Hindu analysis of 16th August by me, Sali Kamath. So if I am audible, just write in the comments, yes sir, you are audible. Okay, uh, one more thing I want to show is, I want to sh show yesterday's newspaper of the Hindu. And the very reason why I am showing is it is very important for you to do so because actually it published 15th August 1947, the newspaper of 15th August 1947. Uh, this was the first page was republished yesterday in the Hindu. Have you seen this? How many of you have seen this? So yesterday we completed 75 years of independence means yesterday we celebrated 76th independence day. Yes, and on this occasion, uh, the Hindu just reprinted the same 15th August 1947 edition of the Hindu newspaper. And that is why I am just showing you some of the things it was like this. So, if you have not seen. So, it says, uh, Free India is born, Union Constituent Assembly assumes power, members take pledge of service to country. See, this is very important thing that members take pledge to service for the country. Then it says Rajan Babu's assurance to minorities. Yes. So these are the important things which got published. So these four are the most important thing that got published on 15th August 1947, the Hindu newspaper. Right. Yes. Good morning, everyone, guys. Good morning. Then there were other things. Uh, here you can see inauguration of Pakistan, Mount Batten's address, then international rights, Indian dominion status. Then if you go down in the newspaper, uh, here you can see new governor of UP, <coughs> Miss Naido, uh, you can say Sarojni Naido arrives in Lucknow for taking the governorship charge. Yes. <coughs> yes, us time advertisement nahi hota Yes, Shakti. Yes, so it was newspaper was like this. So here it is written Friday. It was Friday, 15th August, 1947. Here, is written. here it is written red letter day, members take oath and all. So I'm not going in detail, just I'm showing you, just have an idea of how the newspaper looked like on 15th August 1947. Uh, Viceroy's address here, last Viceroy of India, Lord Mountbatten's uh, Viceroy. Then Pakistan's cabinet, they're talking about this. Assurance to minorities, here it is written. <laughs> if you go down further, this was Indian envoy to Pakistan's Sri Praksa, uh, Prakasa presents credentials. So he was the Indian ambassador to Pakistan at that time, first, first ambassador you can say when uh, I can say independence happened. Burma Defense Services is talking about and all. So these were the things which came on first page in on 15th August 1947, right? And that is what the Hindu yesterday published. So that is why I have discussed this uh, to just have an idea of how the newspaper used to look like at that time. And now let's uh, discuss with... <coughs> today's newspaper and that is 16th August 2022. So let's discuss about it. Sir, along with which newspaper is important, the Hindu. Yes, Sanjana, you can read the Hindu. That is more than enough. Read one newspaper, I would suggest, but read it daily. That is more important. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, start with 16th August, Tuesday's newspaper. And today, uh, there were two, three important articles on first page. So first, talking about Iran denies role but justifies attack on Salman Rushdie. Then here it was an article, uh, it was about Prime Minister Modi's speech on the 76th Independence Day or what we call, uh, we completed 75 years of independence. Country facing twin challenges of corruption and nepotism, says PM. So let's discuss about it. So he says, uh, first he also discussed about misogyny needs to be uh, combated too, says PM Modi. So if you read this article, here it was written. Addressing the country from ramparts at Red Port on the 76th Independence Day. So it completed 75 years, but yesterday we, we had 76th celebrate. <coughs> Sorry. Yesterday we celebrated 76th Independence Day. So PM Modi said that we are entering in a decisive fear, a decisive phase in war against corruption, and he said nepotism and misogyny were some of the other big challenges. So first he talks about is what we call it as nepotism. So what is nepotism? Favoring relatives, friends in jobs, position, position etc. <clears throat> okay, so nepotism in short means 
that uh, you are favoring someone to an important political post or any jobs etc just because he or she is your relative that's called as nepotism <coughs> sorry okay now uh, then also he is talking about corruption which i think you are aware of it what is corruption then also he talks about misogyny prejudice against uh, pre misogyny means prejudice against women or you can say speaking uh, adverse opinion about women or anti-woman statements and all that's called as misogyny so he says that we need to tackle misogyny also uh, especially after the, if you have seen the rise of social media and also abusive lies uh, abusive languages etc are being used so that needs to be controlled that is what he is talking about uh, then he says uh, pm modi said it was a historic day for india as we completed 75 years of independence our nation has proved uh, that we are uh, we have an inherent strength from our diversity and the common thread of patriotism makes india unshakable so that is what he has said that yes the common thread which unites all of us is patriotism then also he talks about here is he gave the concept of punch pran five resolves or five pledges that yes we have to take to fulfill the dreams of freedom fighters uh, by 2047 when we'll be celebrating 100 years of independence that is what he has discussed so we have to take oath right that he is called it at that what he called uh, it's as a uh, punch pran pm modi said indians should focus on five pledges a resolve for a developed india removing any trace of colonial mindset taking pride in our uh, legacy our strength of unity and fulfilling the duties of citizen with honesty so these are the five pledges he talks about resolve for developed India that we have to make a developing country to a developed India, right? Second, he says is trace removing any colonial past. So whatever the legacy um, colonial mindset we are taking, we should remove that. Third, he is saying that taking pride in our legacy, in our history and all. Then fourth, he says strength of unity. Unity means every diverse population living together with a feeling of uh, love, compassion and all. Then fulfilling the duties of citizens with honesty means whatever du duty you have. If you are a student, you should be performing it honestly. If, if I'm a teacher, I should be teaching it honestly. That is what everyone's duty he or she should be performing. performing. Then perhaps he's also referring to that fundamental duties. I hope you are aware of fundamental duties which are mentioned in our constitution also. So can anyone write in which part of Indian constitution fundamental duties are mentioned? Uh, if you know, please write in the live chat. Okay, so these are the five pledges or five resolve or you can say punch pran in Hindi uh, that PM Modi talked about. Okay, yes. Uh, he also talks about nepotism in detail, also hitting out at dynasty and nepotism. He said that their there, uh, there, there presence in politics nourish this evil in all other institutions. So yes, we have seen past also that yes, if there is an MLA, then the son also becomes an MLA minister like this and all. So he gets uh, the son or a relatives uh, gets the political position very easily. So not only in politics, there have been accusation that even in judiciary, uh, there is an accusation of nepotism in collegium system. Uh, many scholars have written that even in collegium recommendation of a high court or a Supreme Court judges, there have been allegation of nepotism. So nepotism has been there. Yes, it is in part 4A. Part 3 is fundamental right, part 4 is DPSP, yes, 51A, yes, article 51A, yes, Tuti, Mishra, Aditi, Agarwal, you are right. Uh, so that is what he is actually uh, talking about, yes, okay. Now, uh, let's uh, discuss about another article uh, actually where uh, Sonia Gandhi, Indian, Indian uh, National uh, Congress leader said, don't be little freedom fighters, she said, it means she said that uh, uh, we should uh, not forget Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Valla, Vay Patel, Abul Kalam Azad uh, while remembering the 75 years of completing, completion of independence. Okay, now uh, let's discuss. Yes, Viraj Mehta, you make small, small line by line point wise notes. The important keywords, just make notes point wise. No need to go much in detail. Okay, uh, let's discuss about, we have to make a separate class of how to make current interface. I think we have made it previously. Uh, we will be uh, in future also discussing something. Uh, the next is Iran denies role but justifies attack on Salman Rushdie. I hope you are aware that recently Salman Rushdie was attacked. 
so uh, the iran's foreign minister said regarding the attack against salman rushdie in america we don't consider anyone deserving reproach blame or even condemnation except mr rushdie himself and his supporters so uh, the foreign minister of iran said that uh, he himself is responsible i mean salman rushdie himself is responsible for the attack etc and all so that is what he has said uh, nasser kanani he is the spokesman of iran's foreign ministry so mr salman rushdie 75 years old he was stabbed on friday while attending an event in new york so just have an idea about it uh, what is the name of the attacker so the name is hadi matar uh, he is a lebanese descent uh, staying in new jersey so new jersey you will find in usa it is very near to new york uh, it is uh, i think uh, just neighbor to new york you will find new jersey so he stays there and he is sympathetic to iran but he is not of iran origin he is from lebanese descent so lebanese origin uh, where is lebanon uh, lebanon let's see uh, so here is india here is iran here is iraq here is syria here you will find lebanon let me zoom it further here yes here is iraq jordan syria this small country this one is called as lebanon okay this one so uh, basically the attacker was from lebanese descent descent means he was his, he was from lebanon origin means race was from uh, he is from lebanon's race okay yes that is what it says okay uh, although living in new jersey which is he is he was living in usa okay uh, let's move on uh, further uh, yes uh, on first page in the hindu i saw this uh, beautiful image of humayun storm uh, orange white uh, saffron white green you can see it here uh, like indian flag yes illuminated with colors of national uh, national independence day yes so it was good uh, so that is why i'm showing you this image let's move on further uh, to the second half of uh, page fun it says aim to create 20 lakhs job nitish kumar says so basically uh, uh, i hope you are aware we had discussed previously also that nitish kumar switched the side now he is having an alliance with rjd so he has said that he has promised 20 lakh jobs in bihar uh, there was one more article here and uh, this actually talked about 11 bilkis bano case convicts walk, walk out of jail so what happened was uh, during the 2002 gujarat riots uh, there were 11 person who were found convicts means uh, the one who has been proven guilty in court it is the opposite of acquit proven guilty in court so 11 people who have been proven guilty of you can say uh, uh, bilkis banu uh, you can say murder gang rape and murder of seven members of bilkis banu's family etc uh, after serving almost i think 15 years of jail you can see it here uh, they have been uh, you can say allowed to walk out of jail under the gujarat government's remission policy so it was in the news so that is why we have discussed it uh, the probe was handed so the history says that yes the cbi while well, the trial was shifted to maharashtra the instance of top course the conviction by the trial court was upheld by bombay high court it means the lower court uh, pronounced them guilty and later on Bom bombay high court upheld it means bombay high court also said that yes they are convicted they have been found guilty of you can say a uh, murder of uh, gang rape and murder of seven members of bilkis banu's family and all so uh, they have been recently released after 15 years of prison so that is why it was in the news okay uh, now let's discuss about editorials page number six and uh, this is an important these two are the editorials that we will be discussing the first is the fragility of the northeast integration fragility matlab kya hota? we call in hindi as kamzor uh, kari yes weak weakness hai na? Nazuk Jisko we call it as. So the fragility of Northeast integration that how to uh, integrate it that is what uh, the author talks about. Then there was an article about meeting aspirations and all. Guys, uh, guys please press the like button. We are seeing very less likes. Only 15 likes, 103 is watching. Everyone please press the like button. Everyone guys, yes. Okay, so uh, before discussing this article, the fragility of Northeast integration, let me ask one question. Uh, this question actually because he discussed this line in the same passage and that is why I'm asking it the dash schedules mandated the formation of autonomous district council in which among others tribal customary laws were given legitimacy your options are fifth schedule sixth schedule ninth schedule fourth schedule what is the right answer to this question so you have to tell me which schedule is the right answer to this question. This line I have taken from the same editorial which we have talked about just now. 
So please answer it. Yes, Muskan Goel, Devadrita, you all have answered it correctly. Very good. Sakshi, you all are right. So basically the sixth schedule of Indian constitution talks about autonomous district council. Yes, Nayanshi, Anushka, Aditi, Kora, Srivant, Sakshi, uh, Rakhi, you all are right. So in the same article, let me show in the uh, uh, website, uh, you can say uh, this is from the desktop website. Uh, same article is there, India at 75 priority of Northeast integration. So the author talks about the sixth schedule was independent, India's first administrative instrument for undivided Assam's rebel belt. And he talks about the same, the schedules means the same six schedule mandated the formation of autonomous district council. So it means uh, some sort of greater autonomy, some uh, special powers have been given to autonomous district council in those six, six schedule areas. Okay. Yes, Koshbu, Bharati, Anushka, Jaswal, you all are right. B is the right answer to this question. Okay. So that is what uh, the author says. So let me show here is India. So this one is called as Northeastern India. Yes, this one is Northeast of India. Here you can see, yes. We call it as any Northeast India. Okay, now another actually question was from the same uh, passage or same article which says, when was the Nagaland made a separate state? Your options are 1961. 1963, 1974, 1981. What is the right answer, guys? Can anyone tell me? Anyone, guys? Yes, uh, the right answer is B. Devadrita is right. Hoshbu, yes, right. 1963. So, in the same article, he has discussed that as an overture of pacification, the Naga Hills district was uh, merged with the adjacent Mon and Swing uh, subdivision of Northeast Frontier Agency or today's Arunachal Pradesh to form a separate state in 1963. So the author says that in 1963, Nagaland state was formed. Then the author further says that in 1972, most of the, these autonomous regions were bifurcated from Assam. Meghale became a separate state. While Arunachal and Mizoram were made union territories and in 1987 they were made separate states also. So initially actually, so this is what he says. So here is Assam and Assam and Meghale was same actually later on in 1972 Meghale was separated out. Then the further says uh, actually Arunachal Pradesh was at that time called as initially NEFA North East Frontier Agency. And uh, it was made earlier, uh, 1972, it was made Union Territory. Then in 1987, later on, it was made a state. Uh, what we call today as Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. So that is what he is talking about. So basically, he is talking little bit about the history of Northeast region and all. Okay. That is what it says. <coughs> yes, Ishika Kamboj, you can call on this number 965005294. This is the number on which you can call and join our classes. Yes. Second thing is, uh, uh, the, uh, if you go to our download the Baiju's exam prep app, go to the CLAT section and you will find a lot of, uh, you can say there's a provision where you can click and call on, uh, you can say the counselor's number. Yes. <coughs> okay. So now this is about it. Now let's talk about it. So at the last moment, the author talks about, I mean, in this article here, the author is talking about uh, that, uh, but the idea of India is transforming again uh, under the BJP government in New Delhi. So he has said that uh, the BJP today has a strong presence in Northeast. The parties in power in Assam, Tripura, Manipur, and Nauchal Pradesh. So he says that even uh, many people in Northeast oppose Citizenship Amendment Act. Yet BJP came to power in uh, states like Assam. In Manipur, AFSPA, Armed Force Special Powers Act. There was a question in this year on this. Glad 2022. There was one passage based on AFSPA, AFSPA in Nagaland region and all. And that is why I suggest you go and read more about AFSPA because there was question this year. So uh, in uh, Manipur, AFSPA was the main issue. Many, uh, you can say, people demanded, uh, you can say, repealing of AFSPA in Manipur. Uh, yet BJP, which did not even mention AFSPA, won the election. So he says that even BJP also did not talk about it much, but still they won the election. That is what the author as talking about here okay yes just have an idea about it now the another article on the side uh, editorial was meeting aspirations india needs better governance for the sake of its own people not global approbation so here it was article let me show yes 
this article this one okay yes so let's discuss about it something uh, we have already discussed about the pm modi's speech but let's discuss in short so he's a pm modi rightly described india's independence 75 years journey of ups and downs yes man there were many ups and downs as in the history uh, in his ninth speech from red fort asking questions about how long india could go on living on certificates from abroad so he's saying that basically other countries do give us certificate that india is developed developing etc this and that so that is what he is talking about and he says that uh, the author further says that only two years is left for the general election means on in 2024 we'll be having a lok sabha election right so that is what he is talking about so less than two years almost around two years or less than two years is left for this where pm modi talked about nepotism parivar vadan etc we have discussed it already when we were discussing the first page right okay so that is why i'm not going much in detail uh, then we are talking about he did lay out his vision for Amrit Kal. So Amrit Kal is the upcoming years. So we are in 2022. So the next 25 years, 2047, right? So 2047 is 100 years of independence. So this 25 years, the upcoming 25 years has been described as uh, Amrit Kal. Okay. Please uh, be aware of these terminologies. They can ask in exam. Okay. Mm. The 100 years of India's independence in 2047. There was little in the 82 minute speech about strategic alliance before country in the wake of tensions, etc. and all. So the uh, author of uh, the Hindu editors also criticized at some places that it was not talk about the tensions at the borders. It means uh, there was uh, the speech did not mention about uh, the tensions at borders, turbulence in international order following Russian in, uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine, etc. So that is what the author of the Hindu editors or the, uh, the Hindu editorial authors, uh, the editors of the Hindu. Uh, talked about it that uh, it was not the article or against the speech did not much talked about uh, this the international order of russia invasion of ukraine etc and all so that is what the article says now uh, let's discuss about editorial of uh, the second half page it talks this one the temples that Jawaharlal lal nehru built so basically uh, let's uh, before moving on guys everyone please press the like button comment share this video and subscribe to our channel also everyone please press the like button we are seeing only 23 likes 41 is watching everyone please press the like button yes now the next question is question number three which is in front of you and it says what is the name of the speech which was given by nehru at the midnight on 15th august 1947 uh, this is actually very famous and you should be knowing it your options are tryst with destiny tryst with azadi tryst with independence none of the above what is the name of that speech? Can anyone tell me? You must have heard about, many people might have heard about this speech. So that is why I am asking. What is the name guys? Yes, Khoshbu Bhat is right. Trust, uh, trust with destiny is the right answer. Muskan, Goel, Anushka, you all are right. Devadrita, right. Huh. Good, good. Aditi, Aram, Aradhya, Sakshi, Nanshi, Ahana, you all are right. Okay, now let's talk about this. This is what the author actually talks about. So he says that as India celebrates uh, 75 years of independence, India will see this as an occasion to remember Jawaharlal Nehru's immortal speech. Immortal means which never dies. The speech, a tryst with destiny, delivered on the night of 14th August, you can say, or in the morning of 15th August, both are right. Okay, in the night of 14th August at 12 p.m. So if you calculate after 12, it is 15th August. Okay. And it's haunting poetic expression at the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps, India awakes to life and freedom. This is the first line of that speech. And the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps, India awakes to life and freedom. So this is what the speech is talking about. Now he is further saying, uh, if you go here, this. So the, uh, actually he is saying the author is talking about Jawaharlal Nehru's achievement in making India. So basically he is saying about uh, Life Insurance Corporation of India in May this year. When LIC launched India's largest public issue and collected 21,000 crore from market, the nation was aware that Nehru institution established this. So in 1956, I hope you are aware, LIC was established during the time of Jawaharlal Nehru. So he's saying many things has been established even during the time of Jawaharlal Nehru, like a lot of IITs, AIMS, then some IAMs also, Indian Institute of Management, AIMS, Delhi, also was uh, made by uh, you can say Jawaharlal Nehru. These institutions start every economic activity. 
uh, he called these things uh, as temples of modern India. So temples of modern India, he referred to these things like dams, ITs, IMCMs. So these construction activities, he uh, basically uh, development activities, he considered it as te te temples of modern India. There were around 75 of these institutions, including Bhakra Nangal Dam. So Bhakra Nangal Dam, Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, A against AIMS, LIC, ONGC, this we have discussed it. So these are the things that he is referring to temples of modern India. Okay. So then he is talking about uh, contribution of other people also. Yes, uh, let's talk about some more contribution of Nehru like uh, Nehru established Kendra Vidyalas, etc. Uh, Bhilai, Durgapur and Avarkela, etc. And all that is what is being discussed. Then planning commission was set up by Jawaharlal Nehru, which is now called as Niti Ayog. I mean, the pl planning commission has been replaced by Niti Ayog. I hope you are aware of these things, right? Now, uh, here the author is talking about the contribution of other important personality like Homi Jahangir Baba. Uh, I hope you are aware of Baba Atomic Research Center. So that is uh, uh, the name comes from him, uh, Homi Jahangir Baba, one of the father of atomic uh, energy research in India. Vikram Sarabhai, he is one of the person instrumental in a space program like INCOS, PAR, ISRO, etc. Right? Then PC Mahalanobis, Mahalanobis is his... Uh, uh, instrumental in Indian Statistical Institute and all work. He is Kyurian uh, for, you can say, he's called as father of white revolution, etc. So these are the important personalities who were, you can say, instrumental in uh, making, uh, in initial uh, makers of India, you can say, right? That is what is being talked about. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, on this one. Now, why this article is important? Because here in this article, there is an answer to the question which was asked in CLAT this year. Do you know this? There was a question in CLAT related with India-European Union relationship which was asked this year and the answer in this editorial. And why I say so, uh, why I tell you to read the Hindu editorials? Because you find a lot of answers which are uh, actually in the CLAT exam. Let me show you. So the author has written about that uh, as we have celebrated 75 years of India's independence, we also celebrated 60 years of diplomatic relations with European Union actually. So uh, yes, uh, in uh, India-European Union Summit 2004, uh, we upgraded the relationship to strategic partnership. That is what he says. If you go down here, it is actually, uh, what is European Union? Let me show you here. I hope you are aware. Uh, these 27 nations grouping of European countries are called as European Union. Hopefully you are aware of this. So basically, here you can see, the author is talking about India-European Union partnership has grown rapidly ever since bilateral trade between two uh, surpasses $116 billion in 2021-2022. Okay. Then he says, beyond the economic partnership, India and the European Union have several avenues of collaboration. For example, green strategic partnership between India and Denmark. Are you seeing this question? This is a question of CLAT this year. Okay, let me show you. Okay, here you can see. Uh, they have asked this year in June, 19th June. This exam was on 19th June this year, right? With which country India entered into green strategic partnership in September 2020? Your options are Poland, Greece, Denmark, South Korea. So the answer was Denmark option C and this was asked this year in the examination. Here it is written. Okay. Green strategic partnership between India and Denmark. It was asked in the examination and here it is in the, the Hindu editorial. So that is why I tell you to read these things. Read one newspaper. I would suggest to read the Hindu and read it carefully uh, word by word. I mean important ones. That will be very beneficial for your examination. Okay. That is why I keep on telling you these things. Okay. Then on page 10, here actually fundamental duties key to social transformation. Chief Justice of India uh, remembers Bengali Venkaiya. So there was an article uh, where uh, you can say the speech of Justice Anvi Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India has mentioned. Our constitution is the fundamental document which regulates the relationship between citizens and government. While it has granted inalienable rights, it also talks about fundamental duties. So basically saying that yes, we have got some rights also by the constitution, but we have some duties also that we are supposed to perform, right? So we have to keep both things in the mind. Then Chief Justice of India also remembered Bengali Venkaiya who designed the pride and identity of independent India, our national flag. Uh, we have discussed in the last class also 
that he was the one who was the designer of the national flag of India. Yes. So that is what is being discussed by Chief Justice of India also. Guys, everyone, please press the like button. We are seeing 29 likes, 34 is watching. Everyone, please press the like button. Okay. Then on world page, there are some articles like uh, Taliban marks turbulent first year in power. So almost, I think last year, somewhere around 15th, 16th August, Taliban came to power. So this was one year of Taliban's rule. Uh, but it says that uh, while the group's uh, fighters celebrate victory, ordinary Afghans, particularly women, face hardship. So the article says that yes, uh, they celebrated one year, but uh, common man is still, uh, you can say, not very happy because of a lot of poverty, etc. The rights of the women are not there, etc. And all that is what the article says. Uh, no need to go much in detail, just have an idea. Then this was also an article, Suki sentenced to six more years in jail on graft charges. Graft means what? Corruption charges, right? Corruption charges. So basically, I hope you are aware that uh, here is India, here is Myanmar, uh, the capital of Myanmar. Uh, go and find out. This is a homework. Uh, the old name is Burma. So here last year military coup happened and Aung San Suu Kyi, the democratically elected leader, uh, or you can say state councillor was sent to jail and all. So 11 years in prison, adding 6 years to her earlier 11 year prison. So earlier she was jailed for 11 years, now 6 years more etc and all. Uh, on graft charges, so she will be jailed for 6 additional years, other than the 11 years, huh? earlier 11 years sentence, okay. So graft charges means corruption charges. So I hope you are aware the last year the military coup happened in Myanmar etc, yes. Yes, AJ Kanya was the first CGI. We had discussed it in the last class. Yes, Aradhya, good. Huh. Okay, then another was China announces new military drills. We had discussed about it a lot of time that uh, when uh, US House of Representatives speaker came, uh, uh, actually China did not like it and China started doing military drills around Taiwan. Okay, so that is what uh, this uh, uh, article talks about. Then there was an article, uh, India gifts Dornier aircraft to Sri Lanka. Colombo had requested two of them in 2018, another five are in order to arrive within two years. So Colombo or the capital of Sri Lanka had uh, requested India to, uh, you can say, have uh, Dornier aircraft. So India has gifted a Dornier aircraft to Sri Lanka. Okay, and Dornier, the name of the aircraft is Dornier 228. Okay, yes, you can see it. Let me show you. Here this is, this is called as a Dornier 228 aircraft. Okay, this one. And uh, uh, here you can see, uh, this manufacturer is Dornier. These are actually German company, uh, used primarily by Indian Air Force, Indian Coast Guard, Indian Navy and all. Uh, here you can see, it is a twin turbo uh, prop steel utility aircraft. Okay, and manufactured by uh, German company, actually these are German companies. Okay, yes. And Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in 1983 uh, brought, uh, bought a production license, means they got license from this German company. Uh, to make uh, the same in Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. Okay, that is what is being discussed. Just have an idea about this Dornier 228 aircraft, uh, which was given or gifted by India to Sri Lanka. Okay, yes. So uh, these are our, uh, you can say, successful candidates of CLAT 2022. So you can join our paid courses. Uh, you can call on our uh, to cover counselor at 9650052904. Okay. So this is all about today's class. Download the Baiju's exam prep app. Go to CLAT and Law section. And there you will find a lot of content. Uh, there you can, uh, there is a button where you can click and call uh, to the counselor also. So thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Please press the like button, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.